Welcome to another episode of the Giant Take Podcast. I am Josh, and I am joined by my co-host and friend, Alex. The New York Giants remain undefeated 2-0 here in the preseason. This might be the most hype you hear me all, all 2022 season. <laughs> all right? I might go crazy, and I'm going to leave it out. Out all, you know, all the players say out on the field. I'm going to leave it out, all out on the podcast here um, for this one. Another game-winning drive, a second game-winning drive in a row for third-string quarterback Davis Webb, who might even be third string or first string by next week, I should say. Um, but, yeah, unbelievable. We're going to get into all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly. If you're watching us on YouTube, we appreciate you watching us on YouTube. If you're listening, we appreciate you listening. I just want to get this out of the way real quick, and then we'll get into all the giant stuff. Um, if you're watching, again, if you're seeing me, or if you're listening to me and listening to Alex, but this is more about me here. I'm being selfish for a second and just saying that um, <laughs> my audio and video is not up to the normal standards that I'd like to hold them to. I'm not home. I'm actually on vacation, but I'm still here for the podcast, just not in the best quality way possible. So the audio might not be as good. The video might not be as good. I'm just recording completely here on unacceptable. Mac. Completely unacceptable. So, um, <laughs> you're going to have to take it for what it is. But I'm still here, and we're still excited and ready to cover this game. Alex, I hope you're bringing as much energy as you are. I'm on the West Coast, so for me, it's a nice, chill 7.40 p.m. right now. For you, we're getting closer to midnight. So how are you doing? You hanging in there? <laughs> I'm doing all right. I'm getting to the crazy hour of the night where I just start losing <laughs> my mind. But uh, I'm super hyped. The Giants won. Davis Webb's the greatest quarterback of all time. Alex Bachman's the next Julian Edelman. And I'm just, I'm excited, man. This Giants team, 17-0. and I see it coming next week against the Jets. That's easy peasy. Uh, and then 17-0 and from there. I'm just, it's just Giants win. I don't care. It's preseason. Everyone can make fun of me. I don't care. The Giants won two games in a row. I don't remember the last time that happened. Um, it's, it's super exciting. And everyone played well today. Besides the 50,000 injuries, today was a very good day. But besides those, like, with those 50,000 injuries, it was a little scary of a day um, and not so good in that case. Now, we got a little bit better news as the game went on, but there was a very scary injury. And it happened to our first-round pick this season, this year, Kayvon Thibodeau. We're going to get into it. Um, for right now, from the reports, again, we're recording this literally right after uh, the game concluded basically like five, 10 minutes after the game ended. So, you know, we really don't have any other stuff besides what we have in game. Oh, except I just got a, or, well, I just saw this on Twitter. Jordan Ronan tweeted out a video of Kayvon Thibodeau where he's saying, I'm good. We're good. Good news. So a collective sigh of relief for New York Giants fans. Yeah. That's the breaking news that I have here. Not so breaking if you're listening to this or watching this in the morning after the game or whenever you're watching this after, but. We're going to keep on checking Twitter, refreshing as we kind of record this episode here. But for right now, we're going to get into the news a little bit later. We're going to kind of go in the clockwise order that we have. Chronological order. I hate when you say clockwise order. Clockwise. Yeah, sorry. It's a chronological <laughs> order. Um, and Alex, while I just refresh Twitter and see what the updates are, how about you start us off with what we have in chronological order? Yeah, so in terms of the big pregame news, there wasn't really much. Saquon Barkley didn't start. That was the big thing. Um, I'm not too upset about it. I mean, we know he's injury prone. We know he's recovering from his ACL tear still, even two years later. Uh, we know you need to manage his load as a you know a heavily used running back throughout the season. So I get it. Um, so he didn't play. Um, and most of the starters played about the whole first quarter, um, give or take. Darius Slayton did not play. There's another key uh, omission, I guess. Kadarius Tony, obviously we knew wasn't going to play. But Darius Slayton, we don't know why he didn't play. Uh, at least yet, they'll probably ask him in the post-game press conference. But, of course, we don't have that uh, available. We, we're not available to look at that right now. So, um, But that's like the big news before the game. So Brian Dable's post-game presser is happening right now as we're talking here. What I have so far, though, is Ellerson Smith has a walking boot on. As we know, he got injured, I want to say, last preseason game, right, last week. Um, so that's an update there. Same thing here from the Giant Insider guys saying Kayvon walk past us outside the locker room. So it seems like all the press guys were there and he said he's good, didn't seem concerned. Dable said in his press conference, of course, the first question is asking update on any injuries. He had no update on injuries. And he actually said when talking about how everyone was like, that's a chop block, went straight for his knees. Um, Dable said that the block is the rules, quote, we do it too. 
talking about the block on Kayvon Thibodeau. So it didn't seem like he had any concerns with that. He had concerns with some other stuff, though. He dropped some F-bombs there yeah. against the referees. Oh, my God. That, that video that Bobby posted was gold, man. It was hilarious. Um, I'm I'm not really sure about what's legal and what's not in terms of, I mean, ethically at least. I don't think it's probably the right thing to do in terms of that kind of tackle, t- that type of block. But if it's in the rules, I guess you can do it. Doesn't mean that everything, just like not everything that's legal in life is always the right thing. I think it's kind of a similar scenario. I'm not like outraged. I'm calling for the guy's head. I don't know, number 81 or whatever it is. Um, you know, people are saying to throw him in jail. I'm like, all right, let's all calm down a little bit. But, um, you know, it's, you know, it's not nice in a preseason game, I'd say, but you know, whatever. I don't really have too many thoughts about it. Um, about that. I'm more focused on the injuries that are caused clearly by the field. The fact that it's turf and we need some damn grass. Um, and that would certainly be helpful to prevent some of the injuries, uh, before we get to more of the injuries, cause there's a ton of them to talk about. Um, Daniel Jones, I thought was very good. And the numbers backed that up. He was four, 14 of 16, 116 yards. Um, he had one interception, but that was not his fault at all. It was off Bellinger's hands. He should have caught that. It kind of reminded me of a, uh, Who's that friendly face, Josh? Evan Ingram, right? You remember him? Do you remember Evan Ingram, Josh? Not sure. Do you remember him? I, I do. Caused a lot of other tip picks like oh. the one we saw tonight. So, yeah, I mean, that you know, if you remember him, it was kind of similar to that. Um, and, you know, Daniel Jones, with those 14 completions, he hit David Sills a ton. He hit Colin Johnson a ton. Um, and both of those guys had a very good game. I'd say they were probably two and three, respectively, of the best wide receivers today. Obviously, number one. It's pretty obvious. We'll get to him later. Um, but yeah, Daniel Jones looked good. And uh, Sills, five catches for 56. And Johnson, three catches for 41. So certainly a good performance from both of those guys. I think they're, you know, we got a lot of guys now pushing to make the roster. Maybe Darius Slayton's in trouble. You know, I don't think he is. But, you know, who knows? Maybe he's in trouble. I saw people. Of course you don't think he is. No, he's never in trouble. Um, he, he could be driving off a cliff and I don't think he'll be in trouble. So, uh, you know, he's always safe. Okay. And, um, <laughs> interesting reference, in, interesting that. analogy, but I analogy. think Sills, certainly his connection with Jones seems strong. Johnson, his connection with Jones seems strong. Um, and obviously Bachman's connection was good as well later in the game, but Daniel Jones looked improved, looked better, uh, from last week. So that's a good sign. I'm going to go to the O-line now, although I don't have much to say. If Alex wants to add more, he can. He's a more O-line guy on this podcast. I'm not so much high, you know, on that. Um, I don't want to be Bobby Skinner. (laughs) Basically. (laughs) Um, But anyway, uh, they look good. Um, Better than last week, at least. Even though they're about, what, six, five centers into the Jeff chart at this moment with all the injuries they have right now. Um, And then Evan Neal on the first drive looked good off the line, which is a big, not question mark, but something that a lot of reporters and Giants fans have looked at in this training camp. And why not? He's our seventh pick in this year's NFL draft, right? Of course, everyone's watching him, but everyone was a little concerned because of the slow start in training camp. And I would say in the first two preseason games, Alex, he's kind of lived up to the potential, I guess you can say. Again, it's preseason games. And we, we make all those jokes in the first five minutes. I hope everyone knows watching and listening. Those are jokes, right? We're not actually, we're, we're excited. We're, we want to, we want to make it engaging. It's a preseason game, but we're hyped that they won. But with that being said, there, it's also, you, you can still say, yes, it's a preseason game, but I would say in these first two games, Neil has looked pretty good. Would you say that he's looked good, Alex? I don't know. Are you there? <laughs> yes, I'm there. Maybe I'm there. Yeah. He's, he's looked, I think he's looked good. Yeah. I thought he looked much better today than he did last week, if that makes sense. Obviously, that would make sense. It's a pretty simple statement. Um, I mean, you agree, probably? Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess, hopefully, I don't know if we're having some lagging issues there. Hopefully, everything cleared up, and uh, we can keep going from here. So, on to the next point. Wink Martindale and his defense looked really sharp in the first half, uh, forcing three four and outs, whatever you want to call it. I, I, I like to say three and outs because technically after the third down, you punt it on fourth. Alex is four and outs. I don't really understand that, but, you know, okay, going for it. Uh, plus field goals. You had Tyrod Taylor. He looks pretty poor, poor in this game. Um, not what we're used to seeing, or at least what we saw last week. 
I guess I'll keep going down through my bullets here. Antonio Williams, the check down machine Alex put in here in the outline. Um, he definitely showed some flashes early, but after that point, um, after that point, he was not bad. So, or he wasn't really involved much. Um, anyway, I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay on top here. Ryder Anderson, Ryder Anderson. <laughs> you got to talk about Ryder Anderson, man. Ryder Anderson. I've said his name about 20 times now. Ryder Anderson had a couple of tackle for losses he looked good. Uh, he was beating his man. I was impressed. Uh, I thought it was just a joke that Justin Pennick kept shouting his name at training camp, but it was actually pretty <laughs> true. I mean, he looks like he could potentially make the 53. He was looking much better. He was looking stronger, um, you know, than the offensive lineman. You know, he's not like the biggest guy to play on the interior for sure in terms of his size, but he certainly bullies other players around. And I think he could be a nice addition in that interior defensive line where there's not a lot of uh, depth. You got Ellis, you got Lawrence, you got, um, no, what's his name? Oh my God. How am I forgetting the best player on the giants? Uh, Leonard Williams. So there's not that many players there. And I think Ryder Anderson could potentially beat out guys like David Moa, possibly even DJ Davidson, who knows? Um, but certainly uh, an exciting performance from him today. I thought he was quite good. And then the other running back, Joshua Corbin, uh, Joshon Corbin, not Joshua, um, Joshon Corbin. Uh, Thinking of me. Yeah, I thought it was you out there running. He was good in the run game. He was good in the passing game. And I thought what people weren't noticing, he was actually really good in pass blocking. Um, so when he was assigned to block, he picked up a lot of free runners and uh, really helped the quarterback avoid getting sacked. So certainly something that I think is important that Antonio Williams – uh, even guys who, uh, who's the other running back, uh, Matt Breida, I don't think does necessarily well. And Saquon, we know doesn't do well, uh, is pass protect. And I think Deshaun Corbin actually looked pretty good in that aspect. Not something I expected from a guy of his size, but did look good in that. Yeah, um, apologize for earlier with me. Uh, we're having a little bit of lag issues. Hopefully it's okay for everyone listening and watching. Hopefully it's fixed up post-editing process uh, with Alex or I. I don't know. I'm a wizard. I can't mo- I can't multitask though, so oh my like God, Alex is awful. chatting me like, "Oh, I'm lagging. Lag is really bad. Lag is really all right. I'm trying to talk here." So I know. I don't know I, why I last... chat you because you can't like. Well, yeah. So I'm apologizing. My last talking point, yeah. I, I kind of I I was really oh, bad. With mine. So I'm I'm back locked in. He's I blame locked myself, in. but also he, also Alex. Blame me. It's fine. And now Alex is giving me ad libs too. So anyway, um. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, mute yourself. All right, let's get into the scariest part of the night, scariest part of my day, my week, my month, my last few months. Um, Kayvon Thibodeau, the Giants' first-round pick, pick five, gets chop block, goes down immediately with a knee injury, giving all Giants fans, including the two of us, heart attacks and uh, moments of silence before we read the news on Twitter because NFL Network cuts a commercial break as we saw the cart or heard the cart was coming out. Um, Thibodeau eventually wades off the cart, walked on his own power, seemed to be okay on the sideline. And then there wasn't really an official report besides the fact that now it seems like he's good. He gave the Giants reporters, I'm an okay, you know, I'm okay. And then Brian Dable didn't really address it. He said he's going to be further evaluated on Monday to see if there's any big injury there. It seems like the Giants uh, dodged a big, big major injury and, um, that's very good, especially for this first rounder. I know people are going to make the argument that why the hell was the first team defense out there this late into the game? Of course you're saying that because Thibodeau gets injured. Thibodeau doesn't get injured. No one makes that comment. I didn't see anyone on Twitter before that injury make a why is the first team out here. Immediately he gets injured. What the hell? What is Dable doing? Why is Marndell putting the first team defense out on the field? Listen. You wouldn't be saying that if we didn't have an injury. You would be saying, great job by the Giants' first-team defense who went out there for another series and got it done. But you're saying that now because he got injured. Let's just all take a gas, a breath of relief, and, you know, Kayvon Thibodeau, our star, seems like he's okay. Dodge a major bullet. I'd agree. I'd agree. Um, (laughs) Interesting way of how you 
message that, I guess, across. Um, moving on to another injury on Fort. What? Take take a breath of fresh air here. Well, I thought you said take a gasp of fresh air, and I was like, what? Oh, well, I, I, mi- I misspoke. Sorry. No, it was Hard. just funny. Um, and Darian Beavers, uh, unfortunately, left the game with a knee injury. Graham Gano somehow got a concussion uh, when trying to tackle a guy in the kick return. Special teams was awful, by the way. Let's talk about Injuries that. Injuries galore today, though, but yes. Injuries galore. Sure. Special teams is awful. Uh, CJ Board got his ribs. I don't know what happened with the ribs. I don't know how you can break your ribs. Like, don't you just, like, collapse on your... I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Um, <laughs> but CJ Board did break, or something, some sort of rib injury, maybe bruising. Uh, but, again, not a doctor. I'm not going to be a Twitter doctor. And, uh, but... Even though uh, Graham Gano left the game with a concussion, Jamie Gillen still nailed a 31-yard field goal. Uh, Casey Kreider snapped it to Julian Love, who was holding it, uh, and then Jamie Gillen, uh, you know, nailed it in. So impressive from those guys. Uh, and good- they got a couple extra points too. Yeah, true, and a couple extra points. So good work from them. I'm proud. Um, best special teams moment of the entire night, I'd say, if that tells you how bad our special teams was. Jordan Aikens uh, got his first offensive snap like midway through the fourth quarter, which was definitely like weird. I don't know why that happened. Not going to ask questions. Don't really care that much if I'm being completely honest, but in case anyone was interested. And DJ Davidson, I tweeted this out, right? I tweet out, DJ Davidson's doing great. You know, he's beating his man every time. He's looking good in the run game, et cetera. And like two minutes later, like without fail, DJ D- Davidson is going back to the blue medical tent. He's injured. He has a knee injury or an ankle injury or whatever it is. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, I don't understand how many freaking people can get injured. And that makes it seven out of the 11 draft picks from this past season have been, are injured right now. Seven out of the 11. Nuts. And um, I guess moving on now to Davis Webb. Right, I, we have to get to him now. So the goat, the, we talked, the goat, the goat, goat third string quarterback. Talked about him in the the beginning. Davis Webb led another game winning drive down the field, connecting with Alex Bachlin multiple times. That looked like to be his go to guy, similar to Daniel Jones and and um, oh my god, what's his name, Colin Johnson, right? Like we saw in the game today, or Davis Sills Army. Everyone. Don't forget about him. Right, I have both of them down here, but. It was Alex Bachman tonight for Davis Webb. Um, and their final stats to end this game and a second game winning drive and an undefeated preseason so far 2 0. Webb was 22 for 27 with 204 yards and two touchdowns. And Alex Bachman with 11 catches, 122 yards and two touchdowns. If anyone does preseason fantasy football, I don't know if you do. Um, I don't know many who do, if any. But if you do, and you had David Sills on your roster tonight, on your, on your team, Alex Bachman. Yeah, he gave. <laughs> Who did I say? Sills. I said David Sills. Yeah, I think that's weird. Or maybe I'm losing my mind. I don't know. I no, maybe I no. If you had Alex Bachman on your roster tonight on your team, wow, um, he put up some points for you. That that's a that's big fantasy numbers. But anyway, yeah, Sills was really good tonight. Oh my god, Bachman was really good tonight, and Sills. But Bachman, we're talking about the Alex Bachman here. Alex, take over, please. You're acting like you're the one who's up at eleven o'clock at night right now. Um, recording the episode, it's like eight o'clock there, you know, get, get a grip, Josh, get a grip. But, uh, it was funny. Uh, Davis Webb was just, he he was just crazy. He was, he was balling. Uh, every single pass it felt like was on the money on the dime. Um, and it was just, it was great from him. Uh, led the second game winning drive. Just, it feels good. Like, you know, someone tweeted this and I was like, oh my God, this is so true. They were like, I've never felt so comfortable uh, in a in a game winning drive scenario, than with Davis Webb, and I'm like, oh my god, that's so funny, but so true at the same time. And uh, obviously, we scored the touchdown. There was like 35 seconds left. The Bengals actually got the ball down the field. Looked like they might have gotten in field goal range. And my guy, Tomon Fox, Tomon Fox. I don't know if that's like a chant. I just made it. I am so happy that he got the big hit. Number one, he actually looked pretty good today. Tomon Fox for the 53-man roster. Love that guy. I don't know why. Um, I feel like I'm probably his only fan, but um, it's like me and his family. <laughs> it would be kind of awkward, but anyway, I'm really a big fan of the guy, and he came up with a big hit, forced to fumble, Giants recover, doesn't even matter, game over, bang, Tomon Fox, 
deserves to be in the Giants ring of honor at this point. Like it's just it's it's amazing. Okay, I love Tom on Fox. All right, a little bit of a reach there at the end. He's like my rider, Anderson. <laughs> Obviously, a uh, heavy sarcasm on that one. We did see actually a few of the um, Ring of Honor members tonight. They were they were talking about them on the broadcast, and Joe Morris even did a little interview. And Joe Morris, we were lucky enough to meet at Giants training camp, so super cool uh, to see that there. It's really crazy how like we met him, and I think it was like only a few days later he got the call or whatever it is got you know. Um, announced that he was going into the Ring of Honor this season, so super cool there. Anyway, back to the game. Yes, uh, that, like, helmet-to-helmet, honestly, throwback type of hit. Um, Really, it it brought in the most of the memories for my dad, who was sitting next to me during that game. He's like, whoa, was that helmet-to-helmet? That's what I used to see. I was like, all right, buddy. (laughs) A big throwback for him. But, yes, really good job by your boy, Alex Tobon Fox, which you tweeted out. Um, and that was really exciting stuff. But, I mean, yes, I, what a hit. I'm surprised there wasn't a flag there. I was like, oh, is there going to be a flag? Like, Not in a bad way. Just, like, I feel like there's something there that the NFL you know, officials are going to call. It was kind of like a makeup hit for the Thibodeau hit, I feel like. Kind of the Thibodeau block off. Like, I feel like it was kind of like funny a, enough, a, yeah, a reply, maybe. I was just going to say, funny enough, um, Brian Dable doesn't even think the Thibodeau block was that bad after all of this um that's true that's true (laughs) but um but anyway i mean we're we're over 20 minutes we appreciate you listening or watching whatever it was the giants versus Bengals recap a few things you can do to help us out subscribe um drop us five stars on podcast spotify drop a like if you're watching on youtube hit us in those comments let us know what you think thanks so much for watching again go to our social media channels they'll be in the podcast notes or description And we'll see you next time for another episode. Peace.